Hi guys, welcome back to part four of our Caucasian painting using our sweet little Jezebel skull. Anywho, last week we had done a few layers of our red texture round, just to recap. And if you haven't watched that, you can jump back and go take a peek. For those of you that have, just a recap, we had made our cosmetic wedge using our texture technique, put down this beautiful red texture layer using our primary red, which is the Genesis red. And we used it in the wash consistency, meaning three parts thinner to one part pigment with a few drops of baby oil. And again, disclaimer, if you're using a different line other than Genesis, please do not use the baby oil unless you know for sure that your paint is a mineral-based paint because Genesis Genesis is a hybrid paint and it is mineral based. It is able to use that baby oil, which helps the paint be a little bit more workable. So that's why I added it to my paints. So today we are gonna decide on where we wanna go. Now, no two babies are ever the same for me. I don't follow a particular method, A to Z, start to finish. This is how it's always gonna be for a Caucasian baby, or this is how it's always gonna be for an ethnic baby or whatever. I always will start start my babies and kind of determine where I want to go with the baby as I'm painting them to determine the next step. So when we had neutralized using our violet and then our blue violet, it brought us down to that perfect base to start off with using our red texture. Now that we have our red on there, you can kind of see the cast that the undertones are kind of giving off. It is a little bit more on the warm side, more of that kind of pinky undertone, which I really love. And we're gonna build off that. So I don't wanna neutralize it too much, but we're going to complement it. And when I mean complement it, I mean, if we take a look at our color wheel, you're gonna see that in this red range, even like the pink range, I wonder if I turn it, nah, I can't really see it very good that way. If you fall under the red family, meaning as bright of red to as dark as red, as long as it is a red, red color, um, from a pink to a dark pink, so on and so forth, staying within this family, not within your red orange or your red violet, but truly in the red hue, then I would suggest to complement it, but to give it a little bit of a depth, we want to complement it by using our green texture round next. Now, a lot of people ask, what's the difference between your primary method and other methods. Primary methods will solely use your red, your yellow, and your blue pigments, where I still do that, but I make all of my secondary and all of my treachery colors using that primary red, primary blue, and my primary yellow. With this green that we're gonna go into, let me show you, I want to go into more of a green, not necessarily a yellow green, so you can kind of see this color. Well, let me open my lid here. So I have to put it on my little counter here. But to bring that depth to that red, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna stay within that true green family. Very light, still using a wash consistency. So the three parts thinner to one part pigment. And we're going to apply it with our texture sponge. Now I am going to grab my sponge here. And this is the sponge that we're gonna use today. So I'm gonna set this aside, get this guy ready to go. And I am gonna use my little mop brush that I have dedicated to using only for my green pigments. I'm going to apply it to my sponge. Now here's where you could go back and make more of these texture sponges if you wanted. I really liked how well the red turned out, um, but you can see there is still a bit of variation. It's not really a model for this. It's still a texture. It's just a different type of texture, which is kind of nice. It will complement that red really nicely. So we're gonna go ahead and stick with this one. But if you felt like you needed to make another one, this would be a great opportunity for you to go back in and work on your green texture sponges to go from there. And so today, you can see it's super light. I'm just gonna get a little bit more pigment on here, or I should say paint. It's just a faint 
bit of green. So this is that green we're going with. It's gonna complement the red, but it's not gonna neutralize it. It's a very soft green. It's just a barely there type of coloring. So I'm gonna load my brush and then apply that on my sponge now. And we're gonna start with our Jezebel's head. I'm just gonna move that. Starting with the back, I'm gonna do that random pattern. Again, it's up to you whether or not you want to see your texture really close together, if you want it more spaced out. If you have your pattern more spaced out, meaning you're going to have more gaps between your applications with your sponge, it's going to appear more texturized. Or if your sponges are more touching each other or your little stamp is touching each other the texture is a lot more closer so it's going to be more of a softer texture so see how the back portion has a little bit more of a defined texture and this is a little bit more softer towards the front i just wanted to give you an example of what that looks like so i am going to do a random pattern here and see where we're at i'm going to do three rounds of this green and then I will go ahead and bake this little cutie pie. When you're going over like the bridge of the nose, the cheeks, any areas that have more of a curvature that maybe you are having a little bit more trouble getting their sponge to get in there. Another technique or a way you can accomplish getting into those areas and not applying it too heavily is by literally taking your sponge and rocking it instead of doing that stamping. You just wanna rock it really carefully. So then it will lay down a little bit of that texture, a little bit of that color without overdoing it. Now, again, I'm gonna take my lovely little brush wiping off my excess onto my sponge and I'm gonna hit those creases again. And I'm gonna go in through those areas that have a little bit more depth. I'm not gonna do um, a lot of the undertones quite yet. I just wanna hit the creases. I'm gonna go around the nostrils, in the nose, in this little divot right in above the lip and through the lip. Now here is where I'm gonna start building my lip color. Last time we had done the red with doing the creases on the lip with this green, I'm just gonna go ahead and apply it to the entire lip to create our first layer of our lip color. If you find that you've put it down too much, just go in with your dry brush and tap out the edges a little bit and you'll be good to go. I'm gonna go underneath that lip. She's got a little bit of that kind of recessed area through there in the folds underneath the chin and at the neck, behind the ear, all the way through. on both sides. We're gonna go inside the ear. And I'm gonna go just in the hole there and in the deepest crease area. And then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna apply this green right at the top of the ear. Just the top of the ear. And I'm gonna do the same on this side. Through here, the deepest crease. And uh, just at the top. So what we're doing by doing the top only is that once we start getting into our yellow tones, which is going to be like your true color that would represent your cartilage, the green is going to soften that yellow a little bit so that this cartilage area looks a lot more natural. So I like to put a little bit of the green up through here. If you wanted to, you could even hit just like a little bit through the edge of the curvature of the ear right there, but not necessarily on the actual edge edge. You just like a, next to the edge. You could go inside the here, but I'm gonna choose not to for this guy and we'll get to that later. So. We are going to set this little peanut aside and grab the limbs. 
All right, moving right along and pick up my sponge again and mix up my paint again. Now, when you're making your colors too, if you're not sure if you have too much pigment or not enough, that's why I'm trying to leave our little color map here for you so that you guys can see where we've been and where we're at. So with this green, you want your green to be as a light of a green as this one. So you want it nice and translucent. You don't want to have a lot of pigment or color. It's just going to softly build up over time and it's going to look really nice. I'm going to do the whole kit. I'm going to go over the knee. I'm going to go over the foot, the top of the foot, the toes, avoiding the actual nail bed. Uh, that area I leave unpainted for later. I will go over the back of the heel, the bottom of the foot. We're about good there. Then we're going to take our lovely brush again. I've really been favoriting this brush. This is a really nice brush. It's not an expensive brush. It's just easy to work with and I have really enjoyed it. I've kind of changed my brushes a little bit. I find that I kind of get stuck in set on working with certain brushes and then I don't know why I switched up but I ended up switching up and started using this guy and I'm glad I did because I really like it. Okay the one thing I did not do with the last one is I didn't do the flange, the underside of the flange for this green and I'm only going to focus on the red uh, primarily with the flange because we want that to kind of appear more of a blushed effect. All right and then with the bottom of the feet I will hit those creases but then I will drag out a little bit of the color just past the creases just in the center portion of the foot here and because it's so translucent you're not even really going to notice it it's just going to be a very subtle kind of way of building up that color and just a refresher i, I like, like to load up my sponge but if i ever worry that maybe i have a little bit too much on there every now and then i will check and see by squeezing out any excess color over my jars instead of pouncing it on my surface that way i'm saving my paint i'm not wasting my paint and i know that i have the right amount of paint on my sponge so that way when i apply it onto the limb it's going to leave that nice imprint and it's not going to just come out like a blob of um, paint you want to be able to see that texture coming through see how nice and translucent that is Behind the leg, there, on top of the foot, behind there, on the bottom of the foot, on the edge. The one thing I wanted to mention too is that with this baby, there was an area on the baby that had a little bit of a blue area, which I didn't worry about honestly because I can work with that and just work off of it and make it into more of a vein. So sometimes if you get those kits, you might notice that it might have a stain that maybe you didn't intend on having there, which can be a nightmare for some cases, but don't be afraid to work with what you have. You know, you can make some pretty cool things out of the most disastrous um, situation. So for her, I have a little bit of that blue mark right through the back of the leg. I don't know if you can faintly see that, but I'm going to turn that into a vein. So I'm not worried about it in the slightest. So use those areas that maybe were a possible problem and make it to your benefit. That looks good. Okay, the other thing too is that, okay, let's say that mark was horrible and it was really bad. 
then how do you fix that? What do you do? If you tried washing your kit and that mark was just stubborn and would not come off and it is on there and it's, it's not gonna budge, there is one way that you could possibly get that to lighten. And I personally not have done this. However, I've heard lots of people recommend this, so give it a shot, you never know. What I have been told is that if you put like oxy cream, I think it's called, it's like a zit remover and it's a cream. You apply it onto only the area that is having the issue. And then you set it in the sun. I just put it in a window and let it sit there for a couple of days and that will fade that area off completely. And every person that has done it that I have seen have done it, have commented on how well it actually works. I haven't had the need to do that. Give it a shot if you do end up with a really bad mark that you just don't think you can work with. Otherwise, make it work to your advantage. And nine times out of 10, that's all I ever do is I make it work to my advantage. All right, just hitting those creases a little bit here. Um, there's a little tiny spot, got a little hair there. I always keep some cotton, cotton swabs handy. So that way, if you do have a little hair that's stuck on your kit or a little piece of lint or dirt or dust that happened to float and land on your kit while it was wet, these are great for just picking that up, but you have to do it while it's wet. Otherwise, it's really hard to get that off. And I also keep that tweezers handy as well. All right, that's looking good. I'm gonna do the other arm. One more arm to go. So I really appreciate you guys watching. I've been able to chat with a few of you that have been following along on the tutorials on TikTok. So that's been really cool. So thanks for watching guys. I really appreciate it. Make sure you guys comment. Let me know what you're liking, what you're not liking too, because I wanna be able to gear the videos around what everybody is interested in and needs help with because not every thing is for everyone so trying to make them fun for everybody so see how that translucent green is so translucent it's just giving a hint of that color it's not going to be overly powerful just a very soft green is all it is it's so translucent and after we do this layer, we'll let this layer flash. Once it's completely flash, then we are gonna go through and put on a second layer, allowing that layer to completely flash. And then once you get to the third layer, that is when we're going to bake it after that has been completely flashed. If you're using air dry, again, refer back to your line on how long you need each layer to cure before moving on. Got a little bit of color on my nail bed, so I just wanted to wipe that off a tad. But yeah, double check on how long you have to let each layer cure before going on to the next layer. But I'm gonna do three layers of this green color before we bake. And then just to kind of show you where we're at, so you can already see that little Jezebel's head has flashed and you can't really see this green. It's very subtle, it's very, very soft. But that's the whole purpose. That's the whole reason behind using the washes is because it's so translucent. You can build up that color very slowly over time and have it look very natural in the process without getting too heavy or too thick. So for you guys at home, go ahead, do three layers of your green texture and then go ahead and bake that. And when we get back, we'll move on to the next layer. Hi guys. All right, we are back. So now that we have finished doing our green layer, texture layer on our sweet little Jezebel, I had done three layers of that and we had gotten that baked. Now we are doing really good. You can see that it is so subtle. You probably can't even notice it because it is so subtle as we did such a faint amount of that green. But now where do we go from here? When we're looking at our color wheel, when we're looking at our color wheel, 
we can see that our undertone is going to be more of a pink undertone for the overall look of this baby. She's going to have a little bit more of that pinky hue to her. However, to complement that pink, if you want to talk about complementary colors, complementary colors are the color that is directly opposite of the color you're trying to complement. So when we were talking about red, we had gone into using our green texture to complement that red. Now that we've done that, we want to move on to the next layer. Now I don't want to change it up drastically and go to a completely different side of the color wheel because I still want to be able to complement that red red. Now this is where you can talk about doing split complementary colors. So if you want to do more of a split complementary so that you still retain that beautiful red and have that nice pink undertone in her vinyl and in her overall look, we want to complement that by working with our blue green and our yellow green to continue to complement that red. So with this next layer, I decided that I'm gonna go into a blue green. Now you can see how of a slight difference it is between the green and the blue green. Our blue green, I do have a little bit stronger of a mix that has been put together. I'll show you what that looks like. So you can see this blue green is a little bit more of a stronger hue, so it is a little bit more bolder but it is still gonna complement that red very nicely so we are gonna do the next layers using our blue green so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use this guy so this guy you can see the texture is a little bit different so again we're varying our texture between sponges with each color that we're using now if you wanted to use the same sponge and just change out the colors you could but it's going to end up looking kind of muddy so you want to change that texture in addition to changing the color so with this guy we're going to go with this lovely sponge here i'm going to get my lovely brush again mixing that up very well and i'm going to show you real quick too the difference how minute it really is between our green and our blue green you can see how there's just a slight difference this has more of that true green and this is more of a blue green so we're going to stick with that guy I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to apply the same technique that we had done when we had done our green layer doing our blue green. We're going to apply it to our sponge. We are going to start with the back of the head and I am just going to do a little bit more of a random spaced out amount. I don't want to do a lot. And I'm just going to kind of go around. See the spacing that we're doing? I want to continue to complement that red without neutralizing the red. Now, if I did this as a wash, this would wash out that red that we had built up so nicely. So I don't want to do a wash because I don't want to neutralize it. I just want to complement it. And then for those of you that may not have remembered, if you want to go over the bridge of the nose or the cheeks and not have to worry about having this weird kind of stamp that doesn't look uniform, you're gonna just take your sponge and you're gonna start at one end and you're gonna rock it all the way over to the other, going all the way through those cheek areas in the same fashion, going over that chin, cause that's kind of a little bit of a awkward area I'm gonna go right through there and across that upper lip. Let's go underneath the nose too. There we go. And that is about it. That is all I'm going to worry about for the texture, but we're gonna continue on with our theme and we're gonna use our little round brush to continue to build up on our areas that we wanna create more depth. So I'm gonna go inside this ear here right in through these little areas that might have a little bit more of that depth. I'm gonna go behind the ear. Do that for both sides. And I'm going right in this divot area through here in the, in the ear. I'm not doing the whole thing. Last time we did the top of the cartilage through here, I'm not gonna do that with this particular color. 
I'm just gonna focus on using our green, our faint green that we had done on that area. In the nostrils and down the eye through here and across the edge there. Okay. We're gonna set this guy aside. We're gonna let him flash and we're gonna continue on. And we're gonna do that with the arms and the legs, the same exact way that we had done before. Sticking with our complementary, or in this case, we're going to kind of transition into like a split complementary. So this layer will be our blue green. And then we will see where our overall color is evolving once we get done with this color. If we are doing really well and I like where that color is heading, I may choose not to go with the split complementary, which would be the next color, which would be a yellow green. And I might switch it entirely where maybe I will go more towards adding our yellow. So you got to play around and figure out what is right for you, what you want to see um, on your doll and what you want to accomplish. There is no right or wrong way. It's just what your Kind of playing with and what your vision is so do what's right for you okay i'm going over the top of the foot bottom of the feet and through there i'm only gonna do the one leg and i'll do the one arm and then i'm gonna go on and i'm gonna do two layers of this i think i think i'm only gonna do two instead of three once I get done with this second layer, I will go ahead and bake that layer. I'm only hitting some of the creases. I'm not necessarily hitting every single crease with our colors because those colors will build up naturally over time. And the more I layer every single crease, the more dirty they will become. So that's why I only will do more of the deeper creases and let those smaller creases build up naturally. And again, you notice we have not done the flange. That's right, I'm gonna put this little guy in here. It's so much easier to hold. Okay, I'm just gonna press a little bit of that on there. I just got rid of some of the excess color so I don't need to load it anymore. Okay, I'm gonna do those random texture. Cross the hand and that is looking good. I'm going to hit the creases behind the knuckles in the palms of the hand. Flip that over, do the back. I might just hit a touch here and the crease of the arm and we're good. Okay, so we're gonna let that flash as well. I'm gonna continue on, like I said, I'll finish the other two limbs and let that completely flash. Once I get done letting that flash, then I will go ahead and do a second layer. Once we're done with that second layer of using our blue grain, I will Again, let that one flash, and then we're gonna bake that. After the second layer, we'll come back and we will start our next video of our sweet little Jezebel. So thanks for watching, you guys. I really appreciate it. Make sure you let me know your thoughts and your comments. It really helps kind of motivate me on where to bring these videos and what information to include to help you out. And if you haven't done so already, please make sure to subscribe and hit that little bell so that you get notified when I post our next videos. For this particular series, we are posting the videos each Tuesday of the week so that we can build this beautiful baby together. Thanks again, you guys. I look forward to seeing you guys all again next week. Take care. Bye-bye.